Personal Finance Edition. I'm Olivia, joined by my co-host, Rashmi. Now that we've discussed taxes in a broader sense, we're going to go further into detail about certain types. After all, they take up a good chunk of our personal income. It's in our best interest to know how they work and how they benefit us as a society and as individuals. We'll start with government taxes, then focus on how state and local taxes work in the next episode. So let's get right into it. Government taxes are, as the name declares, paid to the federal government as a whole. They've collected from the whole country and go towards the whole country. Federal taxes are what make up the government's income. Keep in mind that federal, central, government are all interchangeable terms. You know how on the news, reporters will talk about the government budget and spending. That's your money along with all of the other citizens from the country that they're talking about. Altogether, the government is estimated to spend $6.8 trillion in the year of 2023 and $4.8 trillion of which is estimated to come from federal revenue, aka taxes, according to the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities. So where does all that money come from? There are a few major taxes that feed into the federal budget. The biggest ones are individual and corporate income taxes. Payroll and excise taxes also contribute to the government. Since we're talking about personal finance, we're going to focus more on individual income taxes. But let's briefly talk about payroll and excise taxes before we get into that, since these are also largely influential on our individual income. Payroll taxes come immediately from your paycheck. They fund social insurance programs. These include Social Security, Medicaid, and unemployment insurance. When you look at your paycheck, these taxes are withheld before you even get your money. As I've mentioned before, I have a part-time job. So earning minimum wage of $15 an hour, I should be getting $150 for 10 hours of work. But with my payroll taxes withheld, those $150 turn into only $138.52 of income that I can actually spend. These taxes are valuable in providing income for the elderly through Social Security and health insurance for those with limited income through Medicaid. Now, let's talk about excise taxes. Excise taxes are imposed on certain goods like alcohol or gas. They're paid at the time of purchase. Although these taxes are primarily for businesses, the cost is borne by consumers through higher prices. Excise taxes are more indirect form of revenue for the government. They can be charged by percentage or at a set price for a certain unit. For example, airline tickets are charged at 7.5% in excise tax, while cruise ship passengers are an extra $3 per person. Remember that excise taxes are not the same as sales taxes. Excise taxes are charged on businesses for certain goods or services and indirectly paid by shoppers through higher prices, while sales taxes are charged on all transactions to the consumer directly, with a medium passing it on to the government. Excise taxes only make up a small portion of the federal income. Income taxes are the primary revenue generator. According to fiscal data from the Treasury, So far, in the fiscal year of 2023, individual income taxes have accounted for 49% of total government revenue. Almost half of the government's revenue comes from individual income taxes at $2.18 trillion. So how do they work? Federal income taxes are charged on a scale with seven different brackets. The rates are 10%, 12%, 22%, 24%, 32%, 35%, and 37%. That was a lot of numbers. But this is a marginal tax rate, meaning that all of your income that falls under the 10% bracket is charged 10%, and the remainder is bumped up to the next tax bracket, and so on and so forth. So don't worry if you fall into that 37% tax bracket, not all of your money is being paid that way. So here's an example. If the 10% tax rate applies to individuals making up to $10,000 and you make $12,000, only $2,000 of your income is subject to the next higher tax rate of 12%. The first $10,000 falls into the 10% tax bracket, so it's charged at 10%. The same applies to your next $2,000 in income, which is charged at 12% since it falls into the 12% tax bracket. All of this applies only to taxable income, not your total income. 
This can be advantageous if you are particular about what income you can save prior to tax deduction. Income tax brackets are adjusted regularly for inflation. Recently, 2024 tax brackets were released. We'll talk briefly about how tax brackets are split so that you can know where you fall. When you file, you can file single, married filing jointly, married filing separately, and head of household. These have an influence on what your tax bracket is for each of the seven tax rates. Based on how much your income is relied on, single tax brackets have lower caps than head of household tax brackets. For example, in 2023, the 10% tax rate applied to individuals filing as single with incomes between zero and $11,000, but also individuals filing as head of household with incomes between zero and $15,700. What, sta what status you should file under and how to make sure you file your income taxes properly can be really confusing. So we'll be covering that specifically in a later episode. For now, we're going to focus back on how government taxes are benefiting us. We know that income taxes make up around half of the government's revenue at 49%. And the government will make an estimated $4.8 trillion in tax revenue, which is an expected $2.4 trillion from just income taxes. All of this money goes into federal budget for spending on the country. The federal budget funds various services, but a few are the largest costs. Based on the Center of Budget and Policy Priorities data, estimates for 2023, a whopping 21% of the federal budget will go to spending on Social Security. As we mentioned before, Social Security is a retirement benefit that provides a monthly income to retirees, as well as income and benefits for their families and dependents. Even more of the budget, 24% goes to health insurance. This is split across four programs, Medicare, Medicaid, the Children's Health Insurance Program, otherwise known as CHIP, and the Affordable Care Act's health insurance subsidies. These are all programs that help fund health insurance for around 94 million Americans who are low income, children, elderly, or persons with disabilities. Of course, much of the federal budget also consists of defense spending at 13%. These are funds for maintaining the national defense, weaponry, research, and military personnel. Economic security programs, benefits for vet veterans and federal retirees, and debt payments make up around a quarter of the federal spending as well. A variety of other public services are funded by the remainder of the budget. This includes ed education, transportation, natural resources and agriculture, science and medical research, law enforcement, and more. As we can see, our federal taxes do a lot of good in funding public services that keep our country running. Next time, we'll discuss some major state taxes and how they benefit us as well. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for our next episode. This is Olivia and Crossman, Cash and